Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 41, and today we're talking about randomness inside the random tab. For this demonstration, this is a preset of mine for a sci-fi pack I've been working on, and this is where randomness really came in handy for me. So this is a type of a uploading data, transmitting data type of sound, so it's something kind of like this. So both of these randoms really are helpful for this type of sound. So let's dive into this and see how all these work here. So go to a new preset here, wavetable, go to analog, and let's bring down our volume just a little bit here. For random one, let's drag this to our coarse pitch right here, and let's increase this modulation amount just a little bit here. So within pigments, we have three random modules, same as we have three functions, three LFOs, three envelopes, and three combinates. Now inside each random, we have three different versions of randomness that we can choose from. So with these three, we can always mix and match. We can have this one Turing, sample and hold, and binary, or we can have all binary, or all sample and hold, all Turing. It really depends on what you want to use. So this first one here is going to be Turing. Now when we hit a note, we can see that this is modulating the pitch at these random values here. Now the speed that this is going to be working on is controlled by this rate over here. So right now we're in 1 over 8 and our host BPM tempo is 140. And we can always slow this down. So we're going to get two different values for each bar. Or even slower, one value per bar. Hopefully that makes sense. So we can always change the type from Hertz, Sync, Straight Only, Triplets Only, or Dotted Only depending on our rhythmic workflows there. So moving on from here, these two knobs are kind of complicated, especially this flip knob, probably one of the most math heavy algorithms within this synth here. But the easiest way I can kind of break this down for you, when this flip knob is in the center here, that's gonna be the most unpredictable randomness for our brains to understand. So if we turn this to the left or to the right, it's gonna be a little bit more predictable to uh, some certain extent. So here's the up and down right here, that's the most unpredictable for us. Our brains are trying to make sense of what's going to be coming, what's going to be coming next, but it can't really figure it out. So let's see what see what it looks like all the way to the left. Already there, it's almost like our brains have already figured out the pattern that's that's going to be coming next. So it's random to a certain extent, and the same is also true for the right over here. And then you can always pick any of the values in between to see whatever kind of works for you there. So moving on from here, we have this length. So if we turn this length all the way to the left here, we're not going to really get any values. Now hovering our mouse over it, this says sets the length of the sequence. It also impacts the range of values that can be attained. More steps, more values. So we increase this here and we're starting to get more values here as well. So you can always crank this up to the top of 32. Or really hone it down. And when it's like this, this is pretty much like binary. Just like this one over here. So basically you just mix and match with these length and flip and you can kind of work a certain random algorithm that works for you. Now over here is the retrig source. So we've already talked about the retriggering sources. Basically what is going to tell this to trigger. So right now it's going to be the Legato keyboard. And we have all these choices up here which we've already gone through in the previous functions in I believe the LFO and envelope videos. So moving on from this one, this is my personal favorite, the sample and hold, and I'll kind of show you why. So once we're greeted with this, we can see these random values changing as we do for the other ones. Now let's bring this modulation down just a little bit over here on our course pitch. Now this is getting its randomness from white noise. So there's gonna be white noise playing that this is gonna be reading different values from and picking those and then applying those levels to whatever we want to modulate. Now something that's really cool is if we go from this white noise and we go to UT Noise 1, so Utility Engine Noise 1, we can select this. Now we can go to our Utility Engine here, and now it'll take the randomness from whatever sample of noise we have in this first Utility Engine. So when we're hitting notes, we don't see anything kind of being randomized, randomized here because it has to be on. We turn this on here and we hit notes. So 
So kind of very interesting there. So moving on from that, we can always sample from different sorts of things like this white noise here or from really where, wherever your heart's desire comb or accommodate three functions, envelopes. This is where it starts to get really, really, really in depth. So for now, let's go back to our white noise here. And let's take a look at this retrigger source because right now we see this rate knob is grayed out and we're kind of like, well, what is the point of having a grayed out knob? So that's basically on the retrigger source. So if you go over here to clock, now this is going to turn on here. So this is useful when it's on clock because we can now change these values here. Let's turn off this utility engine because we have that noise coming through. Which gives us a good segue to talk about this rise and fall. So these are kind of, if you think of them, fade ins and fade outs to a certain extent. So this rise, whenever there's a value that's going to be higher from the value before it, it's going to give it a ramp up. So take a look at this. These are all square values, right? Ones and kind of zeros. There's no real curves anywhere. So if we increase this rise. So it's kind of it's going to give us kind of that glide effect, but only if notes only if the next note is going to be a higher value than that previous one. And the same is true for the fall. So anything that's going below it, that's why you'll see the the pitch that it's mapped to is going to do that glide effect if it's going lower. Now we can bring this all the way down and then we have this link, which is very helpful. And this is going to link both of these. So it's going to apply that same curve amount to whatever value it changes to. And what's also cool with this here, if we go to from here to clock and go to poly keyboard, what's nice about this is we can always have this click here. And every time we hit a note, it's going to change the value for us. It's going to get a new value as it samples it. So I let go, none of the values change. And then it kind of goes on from there. So this is basically saying, what do you want it to be triggered by? So you could say, for example, let's have it trigger function one. So as we see here with this function here, every time it crosses over and restarts, it's going to give it a new value. So it's kind of interesting because you can have this random getting sampled from this white noise over here that's getting triggered by a function that we can always have this do whatever it wants. Or you can have this the retrigger of this function be an LFO one. So now we look at this random and this is kind of where it gets crazy because we look at the random, it's getting triggered by the function one. We look at function one and that's getting triggered by LFO one. We look at LFO one and what is that getting triggered by? Our poly keyboard. So it's kind of interesting how in depth and how much you can kind of chain link things on and on and on as far as randomness goes. So yeah, so that is that here in a nutshell. If we could put this back to poly keyboard, these, uh, this function here is going to go off. Let's turn this, uh, back to poly keyboard as well so we don't have those going on here so our last one over here is going to be this binary so basically basically kind of like an on off situation there the retrigger source as we just talked about and then our rates which we talked about before so the real two knobs here are these correlations so if we hover our mouse over here these are very helpful tips so anytime we're always kind of confused or what does this do again what does that do always make sure to read it again because it gives some really good values I really like how, how these things do that. So this is the probability to stay in the current value. High values mean each new outcome is more likely to be identical to the current one. So the higher this knob goes, it's going to say if we have a one, it's going to be more likely that it's going to get another one. Or if it's zero, it's more likely that it's going to get another zero, so on and so forth. And yeah, that's kind of this here. And the probability is basically right to the left, the probability to get a zero or a one lower values provide more zeros. So if you want something like almost all zeros, but a little bit of ones every so often here, whenever it's going to come, it'll come, uh, there's one, and it's going to be mostly zeros or the other way around where it's going to be mostly ones. And then with a few zeros there as well. So that's basically how these randoms work. This binary, binary one is cool. I don't really find myself using this one too specifically, but it's nice to know that this type of thing is there. Between Turing and Sample and Hold, these are kind of my favorites, although Sample and Hold has my heart, especially for the cool sample sources that you can use, especially using the utility noises and being able to load whatever you want in here, which is a very cool type of thing here. So turning that on, and then we can always select this and look at all these different noises we can select from here that, that that's going to take the values from the randomness from. So 
really in depth, very well thought out. And yeah, that's randomness in a nutshell. If there's anything that's a little bit more confusing to you still, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to help you. Thank you so much for watching. And in the next one, we're going to be talking about combinates. So those are kind of complicated, but they really shouldn't be. We're going to go through a certain process to kind of kind of be, give you the aha moment where it's like, oh, that's what this does. Okay, this is kind of cool. It's one of those things where once you know what it does and how it works, then once you want to design a certain type of patch, you're like, oh, I could just use a combinate for that if you really need to. So that's the cool part about pigments is once we get into the combinates, it's going to be really fun. Don't let this intimidate you. It is in depth. It is math heavy, but it's not that bad. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.